Hello everyone, welcome to our tutorial session in Python for Bioinformatics. In today's video, I am going to show you how you can use Python codes to find the reverse of a sequence. Now the approach you use will depend on the data type. If the sequence is given as string, there's a method for it. If it's given as a list, there's also an approach for it. So let's start with the first approach where the sequence is a string. And for this approach, we use slicing. Let me show you how. Let's first create our DNA sequence. We have our DNA sequence here. You can also use any DNA sequence of your choice. I'm also going to paste this sequence in the description box. So we do the slicing. We have it this way. We have your DNA sequence. You create your square brackets and in the square bracket you have two colons and minus one or negative one. So that becomes our approach so we now have the reverse sequence so you can check this and this so this becomes our forward this becomes our reverse you can also assign this operation to a variable so we say reverse reverse sequence let's use all lowercase reverse sequence equals DNA one and then we give our slicer. So now we can print it. So it has been done nicely for us. For easy comparison we can just print both forward and reverse. So we say print DNA one print reverse sequence. So it's there. See how nice it has been done for us. And so if you had a long sequence then you don't have to do it manually. Just use Python and with just two or three lines of codes you have the reverse. Now let's look at the second case where the sequence is given as a list object. Here there are three approaches we can use. We start with approach one. In approach one, we convert the list to a string and we find the reverse using slicing. And please take note, I have covered a separate video on slicing. So you can watch that and then get the hang of what slicing is. So let's begin the second approach. So we create our DNA, which will be a list of that here. So what we do, we convert to a string. So to convert to a string, we use this. We are going to assign it this to a variable as well. So let's say forward sequence equals. If you have a list and you are converting to a string, we use this command. A strange, an empty strange dot join. And then we indicate the list that we are converting to a strange. So here we are joining all of them together. Please note with this method, your list object should contain only strange data types as we have here. So we do it. If 
you bring any character here, then that means that character will be joined to each of these elements in the list. But we don't want any character to be joined to them. And that is why we have an empty string. So we take note of that. Now we run it. So we have our forward sequence. Uh, let me make it properly here. Yes, so this one we run it. So now we have our forward sequence. Of course, we can print it. So we have our forward sequence here, which is good. So now we find the reverse sequence. We are using slicing, so of course. We have covered that in the first video, so we say reverse sequence equals forward sequence. And we have our slicing there. So now we can print the reverse. We have it there nicely. We can also do what print forward sequence and also print the reverse. Just we can do an easy comparison. So they are all there for us. So this makes it easier as well. So this for the first approach where we are dealing with a list objects. Let's go to the second approach. In the second approach, We use list slicing and then we convert that slicing result to a string. Let me show you how. We create our sequence and then we use slicing first to get a reverse. So we say reverse sequence equals DNA2. And we have this. We now run it. So now let's print it. We have it here, but it will make much sense and easy to understand if the list is presented to us as strange, then we can comprehend and easily understand it. We've done the slicing on the list objects, so we now convert it to a strange. So we use the same approach, we say reverse sequence equals to empty strange dot join and we say reverse sequence. So now we can print it. Say print reverse sequence and it's there for us nicely. So that's for what? The second approach when dealing with a list data type. Of course, we can also compare them by printing them. So we say DNA, we print all of them in strange. Since the original or the full sequence was a list, we can print it this way and then we print the reverse sequence as well. So they are four being printed and we can easily compare here. So that is it. Now let's move on to the third approach. In the third approach
we apply the reverse method on the list and then convert the list to a string. Let me show you how. Let's first create our list object here. We now create a copy of this list. We are creating a copy because the method we are going to use modifies the original list. But because we don't want to modify this original list, we make a copy and then work on that copy. So we say sequence, let me put it here, make a copy of the DNA2 list. So we say sequence copy equals empty list. Then we say sequence copy dot extend DNA two. Now we can verify by printing the sequence copy. Now it has been copied for us. So then what do we do? We now say sequence copy dot reverse. So this is the reverse method I'm talking about. And a list. So this is the method I'm talking about for list objects. You have this method that you can use on them. So you have made the reverse. So let's print it. So notice it has been reversed for us. So this is why for this method, it's advisable to make a copy of your list and work on it because it will change the original list. So we have it there. So now it's time to what? convert this to a string. And of course, we know how to do it. We say reverse sequence equals what? Empty list dot join sequence copy. We have it there. So let's run it. Now we can print it. Voila, we've done it. So now we have it there. Of course, if you want to compare, you can just print both. So we see DNA prints empty list dot join DNA2. And then what's your reverse? sequence we have it there so they've all been printed nicely for us so today has been an exciting day and you've been able to look at how you can use python to find the reverse of a sequence thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next session and please know that this notebook will be made available on my github page the link will be given in the description box. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.